I think a lot of us expected this was going to happen, but maybe not so quickly. Swatch partnering up with another brand in its family. Bouncing off the success of the Moon Swatch and how that launch has been so well handled and interpreted, it's only natural to see that this evolves further. There are a couple of reasons why this is such a great exercise. First off, thanks to the Moon Swatch, Omega has had a lot more attention because of it. Speedmaster sales have increased tenfold and we've seen how the prices have skyrocketed. Swatches using this new platform they've found to bolster the development or the future development of Blancpain and the 50 Fathoms. It just so happens that at the time of this release I'm going to be traveling overseas. So I'm not going to be here for the release of these watches but what I can do is give us very believable predictions. I'm about 90% sure that this is what we're going to see. On top of that, I can talk about manufacturing. I can talk about a couple of other elements that might be questionable, like the water resistance rating, if this is going to be a dive watch. But after reading and listening to articles and leaks about the proposed piece, and if this is what they're going to look like, well, they are going to be insanely successful. The unprecedented success of the Moon Swatch was a big surprise. There was so much interest in these pieces when they arrived, and in fact it was overwhelming. The whole world lined up outside Swatch doors waiting for these releases. And even now, however long it's been, they are still releasing new Moon Swatches every other month. With different color variations, with different implementations of Moonshine Gold, I think they call it. I'll be honest, I haven't been following it very closely. But it really cannot be overstated how popular these pieces have become, and from it, so much more attention has gone towards Omega. I think in a lot of ways Blancpain is a brand deserving of this sort of attention too. I mean it's the original dive watch, very original designs and granted high horology. Now I'm a massive fan of Omega so all success to them but there is a clear divide between what Swatch Group wants and what the separate brands want themselves. As far as I know Omega wasn't too keen on the whole idea of the partnership in the first place because it did have a knock-on effect. So not only bringing more attention to Omega at the same time in a lot of ways cheapen the brand and its image. So let's talk about Blancpain. This year, the 70th anniversary of the 50 Fathoms, we've seen a couple of anniversary releases over the last few months. From it, we've seen there's been some inspiration taken from models like the Aqualung. There's been a far more modern interpretation of the watch. And at the close of the year, Swatch deciding to make some sort of bio-ceramic 50 Fathoms. At least, that's what the belief is. Now I need to credit Escapement24 and his channel because a lot of the information I'll be using is from him. I'm going to link his video in the corner of the screen. He has a couple of inside connections linked with the Swatch Group and from there he's managed to piece together bits and pieces about what we are going to be getting. So what do we know? It's going to be a 50 Fathoms of some kind, but there is a firmer belief that it's going to be based on the Bathyscaphe, which I think is a very good move. Get into that in a moment. Instead of using a quartz movement, it's going to be incorporating the System 51, which is Swatch's in-house automatic caliber, a 90-hour power reserve, Lots of technology and innovation that went into this. The most important part of all is that this movement was made almost entirely by a machine, which was why it was so groundbreaking. And also the fact that it's using minimal components, 51 instead of, you know, 300 and more. Now referring to Escapement 24's video, he's talking about how the Bathyscaphe is going to be used as a template. This is good because it's one of the designs that's nowhere near as favored as the 50 Fathoms. The Bathyscaphe has always been in the background. And as we have seen over the years, one of the biggest proponents of Swatch, of collaborations, of the System 51 movement is Hodinkee. And from there, I think the implementation of the Hodinkee Bathyscaphe makes a lot of sense in this scenario because it's not only incorporating elements from the 50 Fathoms, but from a more modern and traditional standpoint. And when we get into the design, you will see how great of an intersection this is when we look at things like cost cutting, a more affordable manufacturer. So I think the word is out that this is going to be called the System 51 Fathoms, a great name, well used, just like the Moon Swatch, it rolls off the tongue well. And as far as we know, it's going to be launching with five base colors. So we can have some good fun mocking this up and how the colors are going to be implemented together, whites, blues, greens, browns, etc. The last thing I want to touch on before looking at designs is water resistance. How water resistant is this watch going to be. If it's going to be using a clear case back, which I believe it will, as well as a gasket system instead of a screw down crown, the water resistance isn't going to be rated very highly. If they incorporate a threaded bioceramic crown tube, I think we're going to have a problem. It's going to strip so quickly. So if they instead implement aluminium or stainless steel as the tube with the bioceramic crown on the outside, we might have something. With that small change alone, the watch could be rated to something like 50 meters, which would be quite a feat. But then again, don't hold your breath. This watch could be rated for 30 meters, three atmospheres, which means 
not very much water resistance. It's difficult to know how they're going to pressure test an almost entirely plastic watch. And on top of that, if they're going to give you any kind of guarantee or warranty about water ingress, it's more likely going to be a purely aesthetic exercise, which is quite a shame. So onto the design of the System 51 Fathoms. After piecing together what I've seen in a couple of articles, leaks, predictions from monochrome watches and others, as well as looking at the moon swatch for inspiration, color palettes, how the typeface might be implemented. This is what I've come up with. Similar to how Swatch used the Speedmaster Professional case as the primary template, making it a near one-to-one -one like the original, I think they're going to be doing the same with the Bathyscaphe case. On the dial, Blancpain time Swatch, underneath System 51 Fathoms, neat, legible, well presented. The case will have a matte bioceramic finish of varying colors. I'm looking at grays, blues, greens, possibly a tan brown. One of my favorites is also the simplest, a gray bioceramic case, a grayish black dial, black bezel, and as we have seen Swatch use this type of green for the Breguet Type 20, and even on some Blancpain pieces, I believe this lime color palette works very nicely with the black and gray colors. Similar to the Moon Swatch, we're going to see some sort of Velcro implementation of a strap, Blancpain at the bottom, Swatch at the top. So moving to the more experimental side, one of the earliest color palettes I used was light blue and white. And I think this works so well with the Blancpain characteristics. From here, we can get a very believable interpretation of what these watches are going to look like, especially when we focus on the dial and we see things like the numerals and batons on this dial. The fact that they may not be applied, but rather printed on. Maybe there won't be any Luminova at all. Looking at the handset, instead of Luminova, why not just a color to match the overall composition of the watch? Looking to the bezel inserts, simplifying them, removing the bezel pip, and just using a color that matches the case or the dial. This light blue variant of the System 51 feels very swatched to me, and this is at least how I would visualize it. So as a designer, I find this exciting. I always enjoy a challenge like this, and it's going to be interesting to see just how they blend Blancpain and swatch designs together. If they will indeed give us a clear case back, if they'll give us water resistance, if these watches are going to be sized at 38, 40, 42 millimeters. But what I like most about this exercise is this is Blancpain in a way indirectly responding to the enthusiast who has always been asking for a 40 or a 42 millimeter 50 fathoms that's not a limited edition. This will become that fun, accessible, historic diver that won't have a lot of water resistance, let's get that clear, but will be that 50 fathoms that has been hotly requested. So we will know in a few days whether these predictions and renders are true. If I got anything right in this equation, I don't know. All I really can do with the limited time that I have, I mean my flight leaves tomorrow, is give us some believable designs, piecing together the facts that we have so far, and hope that something sticks. All we can really do is prepare for Swatch Mania, a landslide launch, and supply not meeting demand. And I'll re-emphasize again, if this is the design that they're going for, well then Swatch has even more success on their hands.